Hi, this is Sherry from The Watering Mouth. I do a lot of work on my friend Jaden Hare's blog, steamykitchen.com. We both wanted to share our workflow for how we edit all the images that make it onto the website. We use the Adobe Creative Cloud product called Lightroom, and it makes the process so much easier. Lightroom is such a great product because it allows you to make super simple adjustments to, to your photos that really make them look incredible. Let me show you the workflow that we typically use on Steamy Kitchen. So this is what you see when you first open up Lightroom. It'll go to your main library with all of your photographs or, you, or the last import that you did. And you just click on this import button when you have your card from your camera inserted into your computer. It will give you a menu of places to search for photos. You just choose the one that your camera is. In this case, ours is a Canon. So we're gonna choose the Canon folder here. It'll bring up all the photos that we have in there. And then you can choose basically which ones you want to import or not import, or you can just do them all at once. In this case, we're gonna be importing those skewers right there. You can see the chicken skewers. Um, and you can see the ones that are grayed out. We've actually already imported those photos, so it won't re-import them. We're just gonna import the ones that um, that are not grayed out because that means we haven't imported them before. So we're just going to choose a few of these for an example to show you guys how this works. We've already edited these before, but these ones are raw. So we just hit import. Before we hit import though, we can choose a couple of things. We can change the name of the files if we want. So here you can um, tell it what it's going to name them automatically. This is our favorite box here. It's the keyword. Um, tagging box and so basically we're gonna put chicken satay skewers for these specific photos that we're importing and that's really nice because you can search for them later and then over here we're just telling it where to import them so we're gonna put them into a folder and then click import so we'll start the import here and you can see in the upper left hand corner there's a little progress bar that means that the photos are being imported and almost finished and here we go, there's all six of them that we just imported and we are ready to edit. We're in the library mode right now, we'll click develop so that we can uh, make some changes to these photos. The first thing that I always do is choose which photos I want and I delete the ones that I don't want. So I'm gonna go through these first three and they're very similar so I'll just pick the one that I like the most. And what I'll do is scroll through and look and I like the third one for a lot of different reasons the best. So I just click P for pick and I click X on the other ones to gray them out and unpick them. And I do that with the other section too. And I'm basically looking at exposure and the way that the food is um, organized and, and, and um, laid out and that sort of thing. Those are the things I look at here. And I know that I can make a lot of changes um, later on if I need to. So then I usually just delete the ones I don't want. So I go to photos and then delete rejected photos. That'll get rid of the ones that I don't want to see so I don't get confused as I'm editing. Leaves me with these two here that I want to edit. Usually we'll edit four or five for each blog post, but I'm just showing you two as an example. So I'm going to start with the first one. You can see they're very different photos as, as far as color quality and exposure and all that, but we're going to try to make them very similar. So we go to the first one and you can see these adjustments that we can make down the right hand side. These are the ones we usually start with exposure. You can see you can change the exposure up and down. So there's not too many bright white spots or too dark of spots. Then we usually skip to clarity and add 20 to 30 points in that area and then the vibrance and the saturation which just basically picks up all the colors and just makes them a lot more colorful. You can see the greens and the yellows there. We'll do some other minor adjustments. I'm changing the shadows and the blacks here just to make it so that the dark areas of the photo aren't too dark so they don't contrast too much. Um, and it's just kind of an art form. You just see what you think looks the best and make these adjustment, adjustments. You can also do the temperature here I'm showing you. It'll go either blue or yellow um, and it really does help to make it look more realistic. And then this part I just think is a little too dark so I'm going to use this cool section here called the adjustment brush where I can do one simple adjustment or any multiple adjustments um, with just a brush so it's nice to be able to just do sections of the photo at once. So here I'm going to up the exposure on this little part here because I just feel like it's too dark. I want to see more of that color in there. I do a few more times in different places. And then I do it here on the noodles a little bit. Just bring up that color. And now there's a couple things over here that I don't like. These wet spots on the plate. I want to get rid of those. So I can actually use the spot removal tool here by clicking it. And it just changes the size of the brush. And what it will do is take your sample area that you don't like and you can put a circle around it and say this is the part I want to change. 
and it adds a second circle next to it that says replace that first circle with something from the second circle. So I choose the second circle that I like the look of and it will replace the part that I don't like with that second circle if that makes sense. So just if you look, I'm going to do this again here on the bigger sp spot right here. Choose the same tool, put a circle down and say this is the part I don't want. It will put a second circle down that says where do you want to take the sample from to cover it. And you just move it over, see I'm moving it down a little bit to cover and replace that first circle. I'm going to do that again. There's a little cucumber seed over here on the right. Um, you can see it's not showing anymore and this cucumber seed I want to get rid of. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take that um, spot removal tool, cover it with the circle, and then I'm going to choose another circle that's very similar to what I want it to look like and move it over there, see, and it just gets rid of that cucumber seed. It's not perfect, but the cool part is, is that most people don't even notice if you do these little changes, so it's kind of nice to, to do that. So you can see it's good enough to where nobody would really notice that there used to be a cucumber seed there because they're looking more at the main food. Okay, so now that we have most of these adjustments taken care of and the photo kind of looks the way I want it to, I wanted to show you the coolest part. Switching back to what it used to look like to show you how different it is. I'm gonna click this revert button and it will show you, see how bland and boring that looks? And those other adjustments that we did just really made the whole thing look so much better. When you flip back and forth, it's cool to see that. And then the nice part is that if you have two photos that are very similar and you just did all that work on one of them, you can just cut and paste those changes to the next photo. So what I'm gonna do here is click on the first photo, hit Control C for copy, choose the things I wanna copy, it does all these automatically, just hit copy, and then you can go over to the other photo and hit Control V for paste, and it will put all of those changes right in there. And now this is a very different photo, so there's some things we need to adjust a bit more, because the exposure is a little too high here, so we're gonna turn that down a bit. And then um, I actually think that there's too much glare in the background here, so I'm going to turn that down a little bit by using the um, the adjustment brush here. So I'm going to click the adjustment brush and turn the exposure down, make the brush a bit bigger, and then just paint over this area that I think is a little bit too glaring. See, isn't this cool? It's, it's, it's kind of an art form. You basically get to just paint what part you think you want to change and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's really dependent on your eye and what you think looks the best, but the more you practice, the better it gets. So once I've finished with that, then all of these photos that we have portrait orientation, we always change them to eight by 10 because they're easier to get on the screen when you're looking them on the blog. So we click that and take the area we want and now it's cropped. Those pixels didn't actually disappear, they're still there, but it's just that it's only showing eight by 10 right now. So you could remove that if you wanted. Now you see how the photos are very similar in color quality and exposure and all that sort of thing. And that's basically what we want. So now we're ready to export. So we export, we hit, we right click, hit export, export, and we can ch change a few things here, the place where these photos are going to be exported to, usually we do the downloads folder. They always name them, the name of the recipe with the word recipe at the end, so in this case it's chicken satay skewers recipe. And then the size we change, always do 10, um, 24 by 72 DPI for all the photographs, and then we hit export. And then there's a progress bar again at the upper left and that will show you the progress of this export. And then we go through and do a couple of them individually. We always do a featured image and we do a large image. So the first one that I'm gonna show you here um, is the featured image. So we take the picture that we like the most, that's landscape format. We hit export, export again, and we just add the word featured to the end of it so we know which photo it is. Here, and we're gonna go down, for our featured images, we always leave them at 640 instead of 1024 by 72 because it's a smaller image and it only shows up for like the thumbnail on the main blog page. You can see it's exporting now. Then for the portrait land, uh, the portrait um, orientation photos, we do export, export, and then these ones we add the word large because Jaden likes to have a large image stored on her blog for future purposes. So that one we do 1024 by actually 150 dpi, which is a pretty big photo. Export that. And then when that one is finished, um, we just upload these all to the website. So I'm going to show you here one other really cool feature that you can use, which is the find feature. Now I'm going to go back to the main library here with all of Jaden's photographs. And she has about a bazillion of them in here. So let's say you wanted to find some old chicken recipe that uh, you remembered from you know six months ago. How would you, you, if you couldn't possibly just scroll through all these photos and go, oh, I know exactly where that is. Cause she's got about, I think it's 30,000 or something. I can't really read it right now, but 
lots of photos. So let's say we wanted to find this old recipe that we just did, but it was a year from now and we're like, where is that chicken recipe? Lightroom has the really great find function where you can just do control F and then the little search box will show up and you can type in, you have to make sure you're in the library, and then you can type in the keyword that you're looking for. So the search box shows up, I'm gonna type in chicken here. So remember how when we first imported these photos, we put in chicken satay skewers. Well, when we type in chicken, they show up because that word is within that keyword. So this is a really, really great function in Lightroom. And as long as you keep yourself organized as you're importing the photos and you remember to do this religiously, you'll have no problem finding old photos from a long time ago. It's so good to do this because it keeps yourself really organized and you can see all these old chicken um, photos that we have, you know, Jaden's actual chickens. And, and then this here is a photo of Nathan actually holding a chicken. And so, you know, if you were looking for this photo of Nathan, you could just type in chicken and it would come up. One other thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is make sure that you store all of your photos, especially your raw images, on an external drive. Because if you're storing all these on your hard drive, you're gonna have, you know, every so often you're gonna get an error where you're not gonna be able to use your computer very much because you're out of space. And so make sure that you store these on an external drive if you can um, so that you can save space. Here's another just example of a search for soy sauce and you can see all the different soy sauce pictures that come up. Um, so the next thing that we always do after we have exported our photos and they're ready to go, I'm just gonna show you what the um, finder window looks like after we've exported these to the download folder. These are the top four here are the photos that we just exported and you can see that they are labeled correctly so we know which one is the large image, we know which one is featured, and we know which ones are just the regular blog images here. So this way we can just go straight from here and import these photos into the website and we are all set. So that's basically it for how we edit our photos for Steamy Kitchen. Then we just upload them to the site and we're done. Creative Cloud is so awesome because it allows us to use the great software we need for a super affordable monthly price. Learn more at creative.adobe.com.